Today's episode sponsor is Indies United Publishing House. They have a short story contest running that's a great opportunity for both published and aspiring authors. Because this is a fun contest that you don't want to miss, I thought this would be an excellent thing to share with you. Stay tuned to hear more about the contest and how to enter. You'll find the direct link in the show notes. Submit your short story and have it considered for cash prizes, awards, a publishing contract with Indies United, literary exposure, and more. For more information about the Small Bites Short Story Contest, visit IndiesUnited.net. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Tamara. Today, we are discussing our December Buddy Read title. If you would like to see this in video format, head on over to Patreon. Check out this episode ad-free, as well as other past podcast episodes in video format, as well as after shows, reading vlogs, and other exclusive content. Don't forget, you can also join me and my two co-hosts over on the Book Clubs app for even more book chat. Please subscribe and like the podcast wherever you're listening. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me pretty much everywhere at Shelf Addiction. Joining me today is featured co-host Classy from the Bookish Virtual Assistant. Welcome back, Classy. Hey, Tamara. Happy December. Happy December to you. Yay. (laughs) All right. So before we get started, don't forget to tell everyone where they can find you online. Um, You can find me on X at the Bookish Virtual Assistant, I believe. Maybe. Instagram, I know you can find me on the Bookish Virtual Assistant. And on X, it's Classy Green 1. And Facebook, it's Classy Green. So, I'm the Bookish Virtual Assistant. All righty. Yeah. Okay, so before we begin, of course, I'd like to remind you that, as always with Book Chats, we talk full spoilers. So, you have been warned. Today, we are discussing the book, The Coworker, written by Frida McFadden. The audiobook is narrated by Allison Krawcheck. Published August 29th, 2023 by Poison Pen Press and Hollywood Upstairs Press. 368 pages in paperback. The unabridged audio comes in at 8 hours and 12 minutes. Classy, would you kindly share the synopsis? Yes. Two women, an office filled with secrets. One terrible crime that can't be taken back. Dawn Schiff is strange. At least everyone thinks so at Fixed the nutritional supplement company where Dawn works as an accountant. She never says the right thing. She has no friends and she is always at her desk at precisely 8.45 a.m. So when Dawn doesn't show up in the office one morning, her coworker, Natalie Farrell, beautiful, popular, top sales rep, five years running, is surprised. Then she receives an unsettling anonymous phone call that changes everything. It turns out Dawn wasn't just an awkward outsider. She was being targeted by someone close. And now Natalie is irrevocably tied to Dawn as she finds herself caught in a twisted game of cat and mouse that leaves her wondering, who's the real victim? But one thing is incredibly clear. Somebody hated Dawn Schiff enough to kill. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. That was a little deceiving, but anyway. Yeah. Okay. But okay. So high level, as we do when you first finished the audiobook, what did you think? <sighs> that this wasn't my favorite Frida, even though I've only read this is my third. But I was just like, mm. <sighs> the characters really got on my damn mm-hmm. nerve. Mm-hmm. I was just like, I was. I was glad it was over and they got on my nerve. See? Every last one of them. I kind of think, okay, let me tell you my first thoughts. I'm like, oh, I don't think they should have got a a quasi happily ever after. That too. Like, huh? Like, this is what, it would have been more satisfactory to me had one of those characters actually died. Had Dawn or Natalie actually died, I would be like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Or somebody served some type of justice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But instead, they kind of skip off into their 
I know your secrets, you know mine, and we're going to act like we're friends. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, and the police, and she, yeah, like, the police fell for that? I know. The dumb but, story she told? Yeah. Yeah. It was a very dumb story. All of that in the ending was such a letdown. So that was my high level thought. Um, but kind of digging into a little bit, I feel like I knew that both characters were unreliable pretty imme- pretty much immediately. Yeah. They seem like two completely different variations of the opposite of what the person is saying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because you were listening, you'd be like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. That's not the way um, Dawn describes Natalie. And then Natalie, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it, it, it kind of shifts into another POV where Natalie is a mean bitch. And I was like, when did that one come in? See, I think like, so all the stuff that was happening at work, I feel like because some of the coworkers said she was bullied by her. So I think some of the comments were real, but I think some Mm -hmm. of it was exaggerated when Dawn was writing her fake letters, trying to set her up. Yes. Yeah. So yes, she might have threw your cupcakes away, but she might not have blocked you from coming in the room. You know what I mean? So like some of it was right, probably. And some of it was exaggerated. Yeah. And I think she even mentioned that at the end when she was saying her perfect alibi was those emails to Mia and how, you know, she basically set Natalie up for for the fall. So um, but yeah, it was I, I I did too. I realized that she they were both unreliable because the stories were just so out there at one point it was just like this perfect relationship i'm here and she's so beautiful and she and i'm just like and i realized that frida is trying to make us or not trying to make us but this character dawn is on the spectrum yes she must be yeah i she is definitely on the spectrum she fixates on turtles she has no social skills um she can't eat foods with different co- colors she yeah her food has monochromatic to be a, yeah, monochromatic food like yeah that's a boring way to eat but okay yeah but yeah so she clearly made us um this character on the spectrum and i got that um and I and I know, you know, we'll talk about the narrator later. And I will say that the narrator nailed that that character mm-hmm. with the monochromatic, with the monotone, with the, you know, I could feel Dawn. Mm-hmm. I could actually like see her. I could, you know, actually like if I was sitting in an office with her and how she would just barge in and didn't care what nobody said. And yeah. Um but she did a great job with with the characters in writing them. I will say that you know um, Natalie was uh, self centered, beautiful, um, and I think she did a great job of making us believe that Dawn was on the spectrum, and here you had Natalie on a pedestal, basically. Well, I also like to kind of piggyback off of what you're saying she did a good job in the end making two three two things true about both characters Mm -hmm. so yes dawn really wanted vengeance and yes she was bullied and yes she had a hard time but also she's a killer oh yes and then on the flip side with natalie yes she was mean yes she's nasty but she was trying to raise money but I should have skimmed a little off the top. (laughs) That threw me. (laughs) That threw me at the end. Yeah, so it's like, you know, yeah, she was a bully when she was younger, and she still has some of those tendencies, but Mm -hmm. maybe she's not as bad as she used to be. Yeah. 
they right. It's yeah. it, it seemed to like kind of come to the surface a little bit, and then it it you know she kind of tapered it down. Like I'm not that kid. Mm-hmm. I'm not that teenager. I was a teenager, even though her mother was like, "Well, you know, you were mean." She's like, why did you do it? <laughs> She's <laughs> like, "What? I did it." She's like, "Why are you lying to me, girl? I know you did." You remember what you remember did what last you summer did? <laughs> in high school? That girl <laughs> killed herself. Yeah, I was like, damn, ma. That's some extreme stuff, though. Like, honestly, as I'm reading this, I'm like, kids are assholes. Kids are little assholes who sometimes grow up to be good people, but sometimes grow up to be adult assholes. So, yeah. And, and, and Natalie was an asshole just in another on another level, mm-hmm. you know, like the skimming, you know, you, here you, you, you raise this money for your friend, you know, we'll get on to that later, but then you just like, but, but to maintain my red Louis Vuittons or whatever the hell she was wearing, I got to skim a little bit off the top every year for this fundraiser, mm-hmm. you know, and live in that fancy house in that neighborhood, you know? So, um, so yeah, she still was an asshole, but just on another level. Yeah. Neither one of these people were good people. And I think that, you know, while Dawn's motivations originally seemed, I guess, understandable, I feel like Mm -hmm. she quickly went too far. Like, even Caleb's like, dude, that's my sister, and I'm telling you enough is enough. Yeah. And she's, like you said, fixated. She can't let it go. She won't let it go. No. But that's that. Um, that's a characteristic of that type of person too. Mm-hmm. And, and that was something that I kind of struggle with, with Caleb. I liked Caleb for him liking, um, Dawn, even though she was quite different, but I also was like, dude, don't you get it? Like she's, she's fixated because she has this disorder, or I won't even call it a disorder, her brain functions, because you know, it's not a disorder. Her brain functions totally different. She's, um, what do they call it? She's neurodivergent. Yes. You know, she, she's really, and um, there's no way that you can talk her down mm-hmm. from that. So this is a side note, but it ties back to the book. Do you, have you ever seen that show, The Good Doctor? Yes. This reminds mm-hmm. me, that relationship reminds me of the relationship of him and his yeah. wife on the show, except his wife is learning of how to deal with him, learning how to talk to him, learning how to, and, and Caleb has not learned anything because from when we start to hear their history, they've kind of been dating and seeing each other and kind of fell into this relationship for a while. This is yeah. not new. He should know how she is about things he should know how to manage her a little better (laughs) exactly those were key words is manage because in that type of relationship you got to pick up on cues Mm -hmm. you know she won't so you need to (laughs) none yeah she has no idea you know and and like do like when she said start a relationship with um natalie you didn't realize (laughs) <laughs> these alarms should have been going off in his head. He should have been trying to explain to her, wait a minute, wait, wait. <laughs> we could do this another way. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but mm-mm. Because all of a sudden, you know, she was just like, but why? I, I, if you really love me, you would just say no. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, but yeah. So, and, and like you were saying, at first you would think it's because it was a new relationship, but it wasn't mm-hmm. a new relationship. Right. So that was a thing, too, that I had struggled with. And I was like, mm. if you guys just, even though you knew each other from um, the past and you just started dating because he w- started working at the office and all of a sudden you came up with this plan. OK, I can get it. Mm-hmm. But you guys were dating for a while. Yeah. Yeah, so. And he still doesn't know her. Like, we find out that she killed someone and he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Poor Caleb. And I I caught on to that real quick when he kept saying, that's real odd that somebody. So (laughs) not only that, but her glasses were found next to the body. Yeah. Did you forget? And even mentions it later. Oh, my replacement or my second pair of glasses. My second tortoiseshell, like the cheaper ones or something. Like yeah, Caleb, my, yeah. dude, come on now. 
Hello. He a little stuck on stupid. He missing some screws. And that's why she like him. Because she. I, girl, <laughs> I do believe mm-hmm. that sometimes when you, att- you attract people at certain levels in your life. Mm-hmm. And I know this is a story. I know it's just a story. Mm-hmm. But yeah. But yeah, I think they, they do have a little more in common than um, Frida may have delved into the pages. Because he was a. A super geeky tech guy. Yeah. So he might be too a little bit on there, just not, not as, as severe as her, probably. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He missed because he wouldn't things. sleep with, and I mean, granted, he loved uh, Dawn. Dawn. I know. I'm keep getting them mixed up. I'm trying to get the, and they're two totally different names, but I'm still getting them mixed up. But you know, he really did love Dawn and would not sleep with Natalie. Um, but yeah, there were some little quirks about him as well. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I wonder if Natalie even, well, I guess in retrospect, she did uh, think about, oh, well, we never slept together. Oh, there were signs. I should have known there was someone else. Mm-hmm. Because usually men are all over me. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Like lickety split. Yeah. I don't know. Don't you want to come back to my place? Eh, nah, that's mine. I think I better that's go home. Because at first I was like, maybe he's gay, you mm-hmm. know, but maybe he's just kind of like entertaining. No, what? you know what? No, I didn't think he was gay because he did never kissed her. Mm-hmm. Probably. What did I think about him? It was something strange that I thought about him that. No, I think I'm, it might have just been that maybe he's just a nice guy who's just kind of trying to get to know her. Um, it's rare. That's but. what I thought at first. I kind of thought, well, maybe he's just like the quote unquote nice guy and she's trying to treat him like he's a good guy versus the boss that she was sleeping with. It kind of seems, you know, and it, it, I got to give Frida like some credit. She kind of flipped the script with the boss a little bit. Like he's, he really seemed like a sleaze bucket mm-hmm. on the onset, but after yeah. she got arrested. <laughs> yeah. He showed that he really did yeah. care about her. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, yeah, she did. And I did like too, that she, she threw enough things at us to try and like, who who could it be? Who you know? There were so many opportunities where it could have been other people besides the obvious, and I I like that about it. I like that it was fast paced. Um, you know, it was a quick quick listen. I had done in two days. Yeah, it wasn't like I had to do a lot of thinking and get connect dots and this many characters and who who said blah blah blah. You know, it wasn't not a lot of thought was put into read listening to <laughs> and not to say that's a horrible thing. Right. Sometimes you just want easy. Yeah. Like I think this is probably the perfect book for somebody who want to get out of a reading slump. Um the, the TikTok that you sent me uh today where the the young lady was like um this is a great starter for someone who's getting into mysteries and thrillers, mm-hmm. you know, because um, it's not a whole lot of depth in it. No, although she pulled a Gone Girl with this book. Oh, I was like, oh, she pulled. A I'm Gone surprised Girl. that nobody has said this in this this description mm-hmm. of this book. Yeah, because she did. Yeah, it was the Gone Girl. It was the true. It was the classic Gone Girl. Switch it up. Like, you know, but it was closer to the end of the book. It wasn't the middle. But, you know, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, her ass ain't dead. <laughs> she left. And the letters. And the letters. And, and the emails. Yes. yes. The same. Like a diary. Yeah. It was the same method, right? Method to the mm-hmm. madness. Um, yeah. Except for she was replying to her own emails. I'm like, Lord have mercy. Yeah. Now that I thought at one point that Mia was just in her head and she really wasn't emailing of her. And well, and it turned out that, but I was just like, I don't think Mia's real, but I didn't think she was um, using this as a plot to um, frame someone. I just thought, you know, like, you know, she's in a room like, yeah, Mia, blah, blah, blah. But she's... (laughs) I honestly took the interactions between Dawn and Mia at face value. I did. I was like, uh, oh, I guess she writing her friend that don't live here. And the girl, but I did wonder why she's so chipper. The author would be like, 
XO, be ya. Bye. I'm like, what? right. <laughs> like, you know. Right. And short. Her answers were so short. Yeah. Like, here she just gave a damn dissertation. Mm-hmm. And Mia was like, don't let her get away with it. XO, XO, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what? Just like, hold up. You my best friend. Yeah. Best friend. That's all you got to say? All you got. <laughs> don't let her see cred. Don't, don't let her get away with it. See you later. Bye. bye. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what? So I, I yeah, feel like I, I subconsciously knew something was off with it, but I didn't know <laughs> what. I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, ain't no way. I just gave you my heart. I just poured everything out and I got two sentences. If that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, why are they emailing? They should be texting. Texting. But, oh, yeah. I see. That would have been, that should have been a clue in our, mm-hmm. but okay, Frida, you got me mm-hmm. there. You got me there. Mm-hmm. That was hilarious. In this day and age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They barely text. Mm-mm. It was it was mostly emails. E- well, at work I get it because that's uh, what they do at work. But that damn that first part of that book when she was sending those damn emails mm-hmm. about something important, don't you? I was just like, if I see I a, know. hear another re I, and don't you? <laughs> I'm going. Yeah, I'm like that is so weird. But you know, again, it's one of those things. You're like, okay, well, this is just Dawn. She's gonna say give me this formal ending every time. And I, I wonder if that's just how she writes or was she like, or was that her signature email? Yeah. And I said to, after a while, I was like, this reads totally different than listening mm-hmm. because you know, if, cause it's reading like as, as if we were reading emails, mm-hmm. but to have that narrator do it, it was like, Okay, yeah. I'm done. Because if I send an email, I have a signature at the bottom. Regards, Tamara. <laughs> Regards, mm-hmm. Tamara. Cosley, yep. if you're going to do that. But I don't know. Mia was so laid back. Like, she's just re- replying. And then, you know, Dawn's like, you know, very formal in the... Very. very. Yeah, because she was basically trying to give all the evidence mm-hmm. now that we... I, as you said, in retrospect, she was she was laying it all down. She she was laying the bricks for a conviction. And she just, like bless her heart. She's like, and I just want to be her friend. I don't know why she doesn't like me. I know. <laughs> like honestly, it's really smart. But my god, <laughs> girl, and that fixation on the turtles, mm-hmm. and you know, oh gosh. Mm-mm-mm. Even having Caleb mess with her by putting the turtle back on her desk incessantly, like again and again and again. And oh. Natalie's like, where's this turtle coming from? Oh, she was yeah. very enraged. <laughs> yeah. And and the and the one thing that I did like when the detective said, Yeah, we traced that call back, but the call came from inside. And I was like, Oh, don't don't don't. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, Okay, I'm in now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was in, but it was just like, okay. It's from the inside. So that was that, you know, cast of characters. Cause it's like, okay, so if Dawn is gone, that means it could be who was the the, the one woman who just got married? Oh, you the thought other it co-worker. was the other coworker? No, I didn't okay. think it was her. But I was just saying, if it was if the call came from inside, mm-hmm. it could have been any of those coworkers. It could have been Caleb. It could have yeah. been the other female salesperson. It could have been Natalie or it could have been Seth. You know, for a minute, I almost thought it was Seth's ex-wife. Wife. But then I mm-hmm. thought, you know what? That's a lot of damn work. And mm-hmm. yeah, she was acting crazy for a minute, but she was just threatening you. She wasn't like, it. I'm like, nah, I don't think it's her. So for a millisecond, yeah. I thought maybe it was her, but I'm like, no. It seemed like she's not even worth her time because mm-hmm. she didn't really she didn't have anything to to gain right. by killing or kidnapping or whatever at the moment, uh, Natalie. But again, it, it was a possibility. Yeah, maybe she could have just wanted her to quit or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But she would yeah. have known about the turtle. She would have known, you know. So there were things that told us it wasn't the, the ex-wife. Her. So yeah but mm. yeah 
and and right and then the voice and she's like i know it was dawn and then she's like but i'm not sure if it was dawn so at one point it was like so somebody could have faked you know a woman's voice Mm -hmm. or or you know they have all these recordings you know technology nowadays you can make anybody's voice i mean you you think about the scammers who who call people um ai Mm -hmm. ai is crazy yeah now. could duplicate your voice and everything now so yeah so so yeah it, you know she she did she did do some old uh some nice little red herrings mm-hmm. in there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah let's see what else so um i also so after natalie was arrested i'm like wow i knew she was gonna get arrested at that thing at her event and the way dawn was just like let me watch it again and again, and again, I'm like, okay, psycho, psycho. And then had wanted to, to sleep. I don't know if they had sex or they was kissing. She's like, I want to watch. I was like, <laughs> she's, I was she's like, like, do you want to no watch? Freak. And he's <laughs> like, I was there. I don't need to see it again. <laughs> I was like, and she a freak. <laughs> she's a psycho freak. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's that side that we didn't never, Mm -hmm. you know, never see. Because she was like, I'm a virgin. Mm. She lied. She lied very well. And she did a damn good job of lying. Yeah, she lied very Mm -hmm. well. I guess she was pulling from her youth when she didn't have a man. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did not expect that. And she used them. So they were talking about her probably being a virgin. She's probably gonna be first with a turtle or some shit, and she's mm-hmm. like, "Okay, I'm a, I'm gonna give you what you want." <laughs> yeah, and she played the role mm-hmm. to uh, the hilt. Mm-hmm. They had no clue. They thought he, this little dumb, timid girl, yeah, nerdy, would accountant. never. But I knew something had. But at one point, like now that you say the accountant part, and when she found the discrepancies. Then it got to the point where I was like, okay, it's got to be Seth or Natalie Mm -hmm. now because Natalie was their top seller. Seth, then at that point, that's when we knew that Seth and Natalie were sleeping together. Um, And it was just like, oh, so maybe either he was skimming and or she was skimming or he's covering for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so I know now Mm -hmm. it's between one of them. Who killed her? Mm-hmm. Well, didn't, didn't kill but her, but <laughs> could have. Yeah. No. Could have killed her. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Were you surprised when it was revealed Caleb and Don were together? Were you shocked, or were you kind of like, hmm? Was I? Sh- I was like, hmm, because when. When that happened, I meet, I won't say immediately, but the wheels in the, in my little head started um, connecting the dots that I bet you this is Mia's brother. Yeah. Because there was no one possibly who would support her in that kind of way. See the, okay. So this is when I figured out that Khalid was helping Dawn, I said, oh shit, that's Mia's brother. I knew it Mm -hmm. instantly because I'm like, who else would do that? Who else would Mm -hmm. want revenge? But I didn't expect them to be together. (laughs) I thought they were just mutual. Right. Yeah, when he came to see her, I thought he was just like checking in on her. But then when they laid in the bed, I was like, what? Oh. Like, what? Because when she said he got in the bed, I was like, oh, maybe they just, because it's cold. They going. No, <laughs> girl. <laughs> you know, like, just, you well, know, like. Look. No, nah, they did. Mm-mm. I am glad that the author saved us from that horrid sex scene <laughs> because it would have been horrid. I feel like it would be yeah, uncomfortable. it would have been very mechanical. <laughs> I would have felt uncomfortable for them. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, it would have been very mechanical. Yeah. It, it was not romantic. Um. And the narrator's voice when it was happening, it it, it was no way <laughs> that that was a romantic scene because she was just like, and then Caleb p- 
put his tongue in my mouth or either. And I'm not <laughs> quoting, but it was, you know, it was just, it was very dry. It was, like, oh, it was oh. and then he got in the bed and he moved the turtle and he must love me because I sleep with all my turtles <laughs> and he gets in the bed. <laughs> like, girl, okay. I, it was not romantic Mm-mm. at all. Cause I was just like, oh, okay. Okay. You know, get in the bed with the stuffed turtle. <laughs> <sighs> he even bought her turtles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he fed into her. So that's her why crazy. another thing I was just like, I think he might be he a little. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'll go mm-hmm. along. Whatever, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, girl, it was not romantic at all. Because in the narrator did it perfect. <laughs> His proposal was kind of cute, though. Yeah, this was a straight fade to black, y'all. Yeah. This was probably the best fade. <laughs> And thank goodness. Thank God. Because that would have been like, <laughs> why did you do that to us? That's what I would have been like. Yes. <laughs> I was like, my eyes, my, my ears, my eyes, my ears. <laughs> and not to say, you know, it, it was just real weird. Yeah. That that scene was extremely weird. Dawn Schiff is just too much. She is so, yeah. mm, mm, you know, very rigid about everything. And yeah. And she had already laid out to us what the bed looked like, what the room looked like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So all I saw in my head was this flat ass pillow in the small bed in this motel. With a door to the outside. Oh, look, I'll stay in places if it got a door to the outside. Girl, <laughs> the sheets didn't match. Like the pillow was darker than the, look, the pillowcase was darker bugs, than the sheets. Okay. <laughs> And I was like, Caleb, you couldn't even put her in a no. good spot. You couldn't take her to like the Hyatt or the Marriott. But you know that Marriott courtyard. How about a courtyard? Can we get a courtyard? <laughs> <laughs> but she said, she, I think she made an excuse, like it would have been too noticeable or something. Okay, no, now I've been right up in that courtyard bed uh, hotel room. I wouldn't have left. I but was like, whatever. Can I give me some That's what with makes white you sheets. <laughs> And that was the other thing, like, dude, you know this bugs her. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that to her? That poor child was probably in there itching and scratching and... Well, she was so obsessed with watching to see if Natalie got arrested. I guess she was temporarily um, preoccupied. Preoccupied, yeah. To, you know... Mm -mm -mm. To deal with, to to real, you know, yeah, to deal with the... She would look at it, but she said, you know what? It's just a minor thing I have to accept. Mm -hmm. So Natalie can get what she deserves. Mm-hmm. Oof. Oh my God. Yeah, that bedroom scene, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. With that. Hurry up, hurry up. In the chapter. Look, with that, let's take a break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll leave that for you to just think about while you listen to these commercials. Please check out the commercials by listening to those you are supporting the podcast. Don't forget to hop on over to Amazon and check out the book review journal. And we'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. All right, we are back. Welcome back. Yay. What else? What else do you want to cover? Did you have any notes that you wrote down? Uh, what did I write down about? Um, no, not really. I mean, they both had really shitty moms. Mm-hmm. I did, you know, I did notice that. Um, like I said, this was just one of those quick reads where it wasn't like a whole lot to the plot. It was, it's. It's just one of those quick, fun, Mm -hmm. nothing to think about books. So, I I mean, I don't think I really had anything that kind of like just stuck out Mm -hmm. to me. Um, Like you were saying, except for that ending, you know, here you you just killed someone, um, faked your own death, and... Well, she tried to say the hit on the head had her out here wandering around aimlessly and she had no clue. I guess that's the only way she could get out of getting in trouble with the police 
You guys yeah. want like we're spending these resources on looking for your ass. You're just <laughs> walking around the streets <laughs> for what? How many days? That didn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, because it was a it was a nice amount of time. Mm-hmm. At least what a week, if not more. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, no, there wasn't anything that, um, that you know, like extensive that we could just go on and on about mm-hmm. with this one. It she's that's just kind of the writer she is, and um, I know a lot of people say you know like to compare her in in Kirsten Magdalene, um, a lot, um. Well, my experience with Kirsten, I feel like the drama level is way higher, <laughs> way higher on the drama scale. You like, man, if you want to talk and, about things and, that are out absurd. <laughs> yeah. And more of a plot. There's more of a, because pl- people are just like, no, you got to read Frida, uh, uh, Frida. And I'm just like, you know, over Kirsten and that, you know, and we've read, this is my third. Frida. And she's not bad, but I'm just like, mm, Kirsten, I think, in my op- opinion, I'll take Another. Kirsten. To me. Yeah, I'll take Kirsten. And you know, yeah. I like the, what was it, The Housemaid or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, yeah. I wanted to read the second book, but I wasn't motivated to hurry up and I do know. it. I know. I haven't either. I wasn't inclined to like read it immediately, mm-hmm. where with Kirsten stuff, I next. was like, what's next? What's next? <laughs> I was like, I got to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, I thought this comment on Goodreads was hilarious. So, she says, uh, Tabitha Post, one star. And she says, I, dot, 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 this is silly. First, this was done on audio. The narrator sounds like a robot no matter what speed. (laughs) She. (laughs) But. That's what I liked. I liked that because it was in Don's character. So I'm like, did Tabitha miss like the point of her doing? Yeah, that? she did. She did. She didn't because sound she like didn't that really... for um the other character. So no, she didn't. I mean, she totally did that. Natalie's character didn't sound like a, a robot, Mm-mm. and neither did Kayla. Not to or me. Seth. None of them. It was it was strictly Dawn. Mm-hmm. Francesca says this wasn't Frida's best. This one felt quite vanilla compared to her other books and other thrillers. Hmm. Okay. And this doesn't bother me, but next she says the main character wasn't likable and honestly, neither were the supporting characters. And I'm okay with having not likable characters. I don't, that's yeah. not a hang up for me personally. Yeah. That's nothing for me to take a, a point off of a rating on because I feel like that sometimes that's the author's mm-hmm. goal. So yeah. That doesn't bother me at all. I'll say I don't like them, but I'm not going to say, you know, that's going to be a contingent upon how I rate the book. Yeah. yeah. How bad did she make them unlikable? Yeah. Yeah. If she made them really unlikable, unlikable, she's good. Yeah. She did good with her because character even in the beginning when I was feeling like, dang, Dawn is just getting it from left and right. I still didn't like her. I'm like, she's no. annoying. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Even though you, I knew mm-hmm. she had, a, um, you know, this, she's on the spectrum, but it was still like, you grown. Mm-hmm. Somebody should have been told. There's some things that people will tell you, like, mm, back up. Mm-hmm. You could take some cues. You don't get them all, but then you're just like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, absolutely. So another comment, Christine says, at this point, I think she's focusing too much on the quantity, getting books mm. out more frequently rather than the quality. Hmm. She has a lot out. She is pumping these things out. Yeah, because her fan base is, cr- I mean, they are eating these books up alive. If I'm not mistaken, she's every other month or so, she's on that top Amazon hmm. Um, what is it? Top selling, whatever Amazon top seller or bestseller list. Um, and you know what? And I'm not mad at her because if that's her, if her audience is loving this, do it. You know, I feel like, um, recently there was an article in a couple of TikToks and a couple of YouTube videos that I saw where people were comparing the current state of publishing to like fast fashion. 
and that they are turning these books out so fast the quality is poor editing yeah. is poor they oh, the uh, editing they are awful. not really working on spectacular um printing anymore they are just yeah. trying to get them out turn them over sell these books continue <laughs> yeah yep i think we even talked about that especially with editing mm-hmm. there was a few books these last couple of books that we've read we um in book club we talked about ooh an editor you know like somebody didn't research this or or went over this with a fine tooth comb and we're not talking typos we're talking about you know basically if if it's november in illinois i'll say if it's november at four o'clock it's dark mm-hmm. because of daylight savings time mm-hmm. so um you know but those little nuances that you know some people would think nobody would notice but you have those readers who you know who are meticulous about certain things and will pick up on those right. and that was some things with her book where i felt like you know there wasn't a whole lot of things that we had to pick up on because she was just kind of quick with it, you know, nothing um, intense. I don't like her writing wasn't, you know, up here. But you uh, know, that's <laughs> why I kind of wanted to point out like some of the negative comments because we aren't fangirls of anyone. We will really enjoy someone's book and be able to think critically if it's bad, if another one is bad. And we're talking about this being easy and like fast turn. And these people, they are not a part of the mass that are like, everything she does is great. Five star, five star, five star. Mm -hmm. People are thinking about them critically. Yeah. And like, yeah, I liked her other stuff, but this. eh. (laughs) Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. I read I I read The Housemaid and I read Never Lie or Never Tell a Lie Mm -hmm. or something and Never Tell a Lie didn't meet housemaids but it it beat this one on my in my opinion okay. you know so um so yeah and i was looking for the young lady on the tiktok video to add that one but i'm assuming she probably didn't read it at all because i was trying to see like where was she at on this level because from her ratings of the books i've read i'm like right there kind of with with her on the rating okay. so one yeah. more for the road one more comment for the road emma says my iq just dropped 37 points <laughs> Everything I learned about turtles in this book was without my consent. (laughs) We did get a lot of facts on turtles. Oh, gosh. Girl. Yeah. I was amazed. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I did crack up when she wrote the Etsy seller and the Etsy seller (laughs) wrote her back. Is Is this real? She said, this is the wrong kind of turtle. (laughs) I ordered. A, a this land turtle or flappers and this is a right sea turtle. And, yes, a land turtle. She wanted to let yeah. And the Etsy ro- and the Etsy sellers wrote her back. Is this for real? Are you for real? <laughs> she Are like, you kidding me? Woman, these came from China. It says turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make this. Right. <laughs> oh, I was cracking up. That that tickled me. Like wow. That tickled me. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, all right. So should we, we kind of talked about the narrator the whole time, but we like, we, I like the narrator. You like the narrator? I liked her. I think she did a great job with, you know, distinguishing every character. She did an excellent job. Mm-hmm. I felt, I, I felt Dawn, mm-hmm. Dawn Chiff. <laughs> yeah. I could see her when I listened. I could see Natalie. She did a great job. Yeah. I think she did. I agree. Yeah. I'm glad, uh. I was able to listen instead of read because I might have been a little bit bored if I was reading it. Yeah, I think so, too. She added some she added flavor to this book. Mm-hmm, she did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anything else or should we go ahead and rate the coworker? I don't have anything else. Yep. I, you know, I think we hit the, the high points. We did. In, the, in my opinion, we hit the high point. I mean, because honestly, like you said, like you said, it's a very simple story. It's not like there's a whole bunch of things to delve into here. You know, we we covered, I think, all the major plot points. Yeah. So let's let's rate the thing. Let's rate it, shall we? Okay. Yes, let's rate it. Okay. You gonna maybe go first again? Well, I'll go first. Okay. Okay. So I rated it a three star because 
It was fine. It was good. It was good. Um, if someone says, tell me which Frida book to read, this won't, I won't say this one. So yeah. that's why I got the three slot. What about you? I am exactly where you are. A three. It was okay. It wasn't horrible. I had some good moments, but it's not something out of all the books that I have read of Frida. This one would be on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Housemaid would be top. Um, it was, it was it was fun. It wasn't horrible. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, for the end of the year, just to do, it was okay. Yes. Like three out of five is really good for us. That's a, po- that's a yeah. good rating for us. We don't consider that bad here. Yeah. And, and I think I would recommend this for someone who is trying to knock last couple of books out at the end of the year. Oh, grab it on dang, audio. Yes. Listen at two X speed. I think I listened at two X. I got yeah. it done really fast. Yeah, I agree with you. If you're just trying to get some stuff in or if you just need something to get you out of a slump Mm -hmm. real quick or just something. Yeah, pick this up. Easy peasy. Yep. All right. So that was our final buddy read of 2023. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I was hoping we wish I had like flares and confetti and all that. So honestly, I thought we would end on a a high note, but we ended on a middle note, which is Yeah. It wasn't horrible. Yeah. I was looking for something, you know, I was like, come on, Frida, because everybody else, you know, Mm -hmm. everybody was tussling about this. Ooh, this is a good one. I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. we read Housemaid. Let's try this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So up next, we are going to have, um, I think actually it's all going to be available. Yeah, it's going to be next week. So up next, you'll get our whole re- entire recap of 2023 and the 12 books we read here on the podcast. So you'll want to make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss all our thoughts. Um, yes. yes, on our year end wrap up. And definitely you don't want to miss when we're back here in January because I'll share with you now we are reading Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll in January. And you want to be here for that. So like, subscribe, share with your other bookish friends. If you're into book club, join us on the book clubs app. We'd love to have you. And I guess that's it. Anything else, Classy? No, that's it. All right, you guys. It's been one. It's been one. Happy holidays. We'll see, talk to you soon. And if you don't hear us again this year, catch you in 2024. Take care yes. of yourselves. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.